It's a Conspiracy is a proud member of the Alberta Podcast Network, powered by ATB. For a list of other fun programming, please check out the Alberta Podcast Network.com, where you can find shows like Bollywood is for Lovers, where Matt and Aaron explore the world of Hindi cinema through the lenses of two Canadian cinephiles. Boom. That should be great. This episode of It's a Conspiracy is brought to you by Unit B Coworking. Unit B is a multi company co working space focused on helping people pursue their passions and making Edmonton its creative best. Join a tight knit group of freelancers, startups, and established organizations, all dedicated to getting things done. Besides desks and offices, Unit B offers members access to its podcasting studio and meeting spaces, as well as a kitchen, Wi Fi, and the usual amenities. It's located in the historic McKinney Building on 104th Street, close to everything downtown, including the Bay LRT station. Book a tour today at unitb.ca. There's a restaurant on the west side of the city Where the coffee's fine, I guess this food will do But it's got you And it's the best place I Oh, thank you. Thank you. Andrew just bought us some potions. Fine. Some elixirs. I'm potioned up. I, okay, Elec- intellect activate. Yeah. <laughs> the truth serum is out. Yeah. We talked about truth serum, man. They actually used alcohol as a truth serum uh, in the um, early stages of the MK Ultra program. I, I believe, believe it. That. Yeah, it's wow. unreal. Okay. It wasn't uh, like... Uh, old, like Shogun warlords and everything to, to decide stuff they would actually just get like super wasted on sake just so they would actually tell each other the truth and then just wake up and hopefully remember the decision <laughs> did I tell them the whole truth yeah. I tell them how handsome I find him <laughs> uh, okay episode 5 the final frontier Welcome back, everyone, to It's a Conspiracy. This is the podcast where we lay out the beliefs behind select conspiracy theories, alternative accounts, legends, myths, and more. I'm your host, Andrew, and I do not claim to be an expert on anything we're going to discuss today. And I will probably be wrong about everything, as usual, because I never know what the hell we're talking about. You like, never know. Yeah, I never understand. Um, and if, you're the one who brings it to I, us. I present it, but that doesn't mean anything. Uh, it's like the whole Alec Trebek thing. He doesn't... He doesn't know the answer. Oh, he's a genius. Uh, if you'd like to see where we dug up whatever claptrap we're going to discuss today, then please check out the resources in the episode description. Uh, Charlie works extremely hard on that. And frankly, not checking those links is the same as just spitting in his face. Hey, now let me ask you something. Yes, do, you, do you ever check the links? Uh, I used to check them all the time, and now not so much. No, you don't? Yeah. You trust me. Uh, you trust me? I don't know if we're going that far. Oh, that's good. But I... Sorry. Yes, I do check there them. There Yeah. Yeah, I should say that. Yeah. I heard there was a sneaky one in there once. Do you so. trust me? <laughs> uh, we are a proud member of the Alberta Podcast Network, powered by ATB, and we're coming to you live from the Gamers Lodge in Edmonton. And this is really cool. You can probably hear the, the background buzz. And we have one of the owners here with us. Do you want to tell us what the Gamers Lodge is all about? Yeah. So the Gamers Lodge is a community-focused board game cafe. Uh, we've got over 750 board games for you to choose from uh, and a full menu. And we've got a really geeky pop culture vibe. Um, and if you don't believe me, you'll have to come down and see it for yourself. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Check it out. Boom. So this is our friend Carlos Calleja. Oh, pretty close. Was Calleja, yeah. Calle- uh, okay. I actually pronounce it wrong in Spanish, and my Spanish friends will actually give me heck for it. So Okay, all right. Well, if we're known for anything, right. it's bang on pronunciation. Hey, man. <laughs> well, being Filipino, it's a protest. I would have to say probably. <laughs> Uh, and we also have uh, we have, we have Charlie as as usual. We're missing Yo. Greg today, and we have our good friend Joyful Jason. Hello, hi. I yeah. don't know if everyone's called me Joyful Jason. Joyful but Jason. I I think I'll, joyful every time I see you. I'll, I'll put it in there. <laughs> <laughs> put it in the resume. So. Uh, these three nuggets of platonic love, through thick and thin, will be presented with uh, selected theories and interject as they see fit. So, Carlos, please. Uh, go ahead and jump in if you have a special thought on something. Still comes numbers. into my mind. Yeah. You want me to say potatoes again? Or That's it. <laughs> if you would like to keep up to date uh, with what we were up to here at It's Conspiracy, then please check out our website. It's Conspiracy Podcast, where you can find links to our Twitter, our Facebook group, the Instagram. That's run by Greg. Our emails and our Patreon page. Patreon.com slash It's a Conspiracy. conspiracy. Okay. So, Charlie, yeah. with a, a yes or no, can you tell me if you've heard of this one theory? What? 
The Great Dungeons and Dragons Panic. No. Oh, okay. Subject number one, The Great Dungeons and Dragons Panic. Dungeons, Jason? I, uh, wow, gee, that's a tough question. <laughs> Rate them all the time. <laughs> Virtual dungeons? Yes, yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, oh, oh, oh. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of tall, so I tend to hit my head in a lot of dungeons. <laughs> Everything so feels like a lot of yeah. dungeons. So mountains are right at Do you guys like dragons? Ride them. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, do that's you how guys, I got here. Do you guys like uh, outrage and panic? <laughs> Ooh, off where there's dragons, there's outrage and panic. Live off of it. Live <laughs> off of it. <laughs> Have either the three of you played uh, Dungeons and Dragons before? Uh, yes. Okay. It's been a while. Embarrassingly, oh. no. What? No. Wow. Charlie, we got to do that's, something about this. That's what I was saying. That's ah. why when I pitched you the idea of a board game Absolutely. episode, I said we should have someone DM us. A Dungeons and Dragons, but match. you you said it so confidently that I thought you knew. Like you were like, "Oh, DM, I got a buddy. We Tuesday nights." Yeah, but, man, you use the lingo. You gotta. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I I know it. I'm familiar with all oh. of a lot of it. I just there's a lot of uh, Dungeons and Dragons groups that come in here. Yeah, and I just learned it by watching. Learned by and, watching. Uh, there we go. See. Oh man, that is wild. Now I don't I, feel so bad. Yeah. Uh, do you feel? kind of morally compromised by your ventures into Dungeons and Dragons? <laughs> no. Okay, no. all right. Jason, are you okay with it? Oh, yeah, I okay. should be fine. Okay. All right. Uh, in 1974, a board game called Dungeons and Dragons, or D&D as it's commonly known, was released by a company called TSR, Tactical Studies Rules. This game developed by, uh, this has got to be a fake name, Gary Gygax. Sure, no, that's yeah, legit. And, and legit to get. Gygax <laughs> and Dave Arneson has gone on to be one of the most popular tabletop games of all time. Spawned a sprawling industry that includes movies, television, anime, comics, toys, books, and a whole lot of straight-up old-fashioned pandemonium. Uh, in 1979, a 16-year-old student named James Dallas Egbert III was studying at Michigan State University uh, when he went missing. His family hired a private investigator named William Deere to find the boy. Deer had a hunch that Egbert's disappearance was related to his love of D&D, and uh, perhaps the boy had wandered into the extensive underground sewer system at the university as a means of acting out the fantasies from the role-playing game. Have you guys sure. heard of this before? Well, you know, it's just like, uh, no. it's akin to going into the sewers to meet the Ninja Turtles. To meet the Ninja Turtles, <laughs> which was another panic. <laughs> yeah, which I did. <laughs> uh, ultimately, Deer didn't find the boy and returned home empty-handed. However, the experience had changed him and he immediately set to writing a book called The Dungeon Master. This chronicled how Dungeons and Dragons was an elaborate plot to lure innocent children <gasps> into acting out the game in real life and possibly even committing ritualistic suicide. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, just just like yeah. yeah. It's interesting to think that was the thought instead of you know wanting to make money or something. Yeah. You know, <laughs> being the primary <laughs> making money is one thing. Isn't that always really step want, one though? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's the question marks in the step four. Oh, right there. Profit. Ultimately, Egbert did show up. He was alive. Uh, yeah, uh, shocker. He was, he was fine. Yeah, Egbert James Dallas Egbert the uh, third. He had been hiding from his friends and horrible, horrible family. It was revealed there was a myriad of problems that had contributed to his disappearance. Uh, I mean, one thing, he was 16 and in university. So, like, right there. A smart guy. Yeah, mm. smart guy. But, you know, if you're that young and in university, that's yikes. Yeah. Uh, What's your major? Tinker toys? <laughs> 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 so, it, it, it turned out that a couple years later, Egbert did take his own life, and that event got all mixed up and became the focal point of a national panic. So that was like 1979. A couple years later, everyone's like, this guy disappeared and then he committed suicide and there was a book written about it and everything's gone crazy and if you're down in the sewers, people are dressing up like knights and cutting everyone up. You know, so, that only makes me want to visit the sewers more. Uh, I'm, I'm a little lured myself. I mean, this is, you know, uh, yeah. And this, it's weird that the sewers is our constant theme. That was the same as the Ninja Turtles. Sure. Oh, it's, yeah. It's a, it's a practical dungeon for our time. It's kind of romantic when you think about right? it. Right? Yeah. You know? <laughs> Without all the treasure. You know? <laughs> uh, treasure. You're not looking in the right places, Jay. <laughs> Critics insisted that the game which seemed harmless and fun from the outside, was ultimately designed to have children act out violent fantasies, run away from home, cast spells on each other, curse each other, and then uh, commit suicide. 
So there was a number of high-profile public cases, including the novel and subsequent film Mazes and Monsters. Have you guys seen this movie before? Mazes and Monsters. No. Is that the one with uh, like Tom Hanks it's and he goes it's off like the his deep first end. movie. Yeah, yeah, I remember watching that. Very thinking, young Tom Hanks. Wow, this is some propaganda or something oh. against. Uh, <laughs> I've seen this Carlos before. Story. I haven't, but I think this is going to send me down a rabbit hole of Tom Hanks movies. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> yeah. He's so young in it, and, and he's, he's uh, yeah, he's down in the sewers with the Ninja Turtles. Uh, one in particular stands out. A woman named uh, Patricia Pulling believed her son committed suicide after having a curse put on him via the game. And the odd thing here is that the guy was had been playing with his school principal in an after school club. Ooh. Yeah. What level is that guy at? <laughs> <laughs> so the, pr- the principal mastered the curses, something happened, and the principal cursed this kid, and then the kid uh, killed himself and the and the mom blamed Dungeons and Dragons. So seems pretty natural. To I, me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just the natural <laughs> yeah. That's the connection right there. Well, uh, pulling subsequently sued the creators of the game, Gygax and Arneson. And this led to this issue being featured on the episode uh, or on an on episode of 60 Minutes. In this program, they denied all the allegations and insisted that the game was purely an entertaining board game just for funsies. <laughs> you know, yeah. Uh, the court case against the two was ultimately dropped. It was actually proven in the case that the suicide rate among gamers was lower than the rate among non-gamers. So that's, that's interesting. Uh, yeah. But that didn't stop pulling who went on to perform the society of Bad. So B A D D. That stands for bothered about Dungeons and Dragons. Wow, that's a real thing. Yeah, that's a wow. real thing. Bad. That went all the way till 1997. Wow. Yeah. So Carlos is actually president of the Bad Chapter in Edmonton. I. Uh, that's that? exactly. Okay. Right. Yeah. I heard about it and uh, misunderstood what they were talking about. Yeah. <laughs> and lo and behold, right. Oh man. Uh, Pulling described the game as a fantasy role-playing game which uses demonology, witchcraft, voodoo, murder, blasphemy, suicide, assassination, insanity, sex, perversion, homosexuality, prostitution, rituals, gambling, barbarism, cannibalism, desecration, necromantics, divination, and all the other teachings. The bad movement caught on through mainstream media outlets, and there are thousands of news reports, and genuine panic gripped parents and guardians across the world. And Question. Yes, sir. This was before they had video games to blame, yeah? This would have been right before, because I remember when this was going on, and this would be like maybe the Atari... Because i got to assume Final Fantasy's out at this time. Like Maybe a Nintendo mm-hmm. version of Final Fantasy? Yeah, like... Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's when things this, really this kicked This world into exists at this point in I don't the digital know if realm. Let's see, what, what year did you say it was? Uh, so 1979, 1979 was when James Dallas Egbert III had gone missing. And then the Tom Hanks movie was like early 80s, maybe 82, 83. He's right. really young in it. Right. Like well, Final like Fantasy that. was at 87. Yeah. So this oh is God. this is pre video games are terrible mm. for yeah. everyone. But not super pre. No, this is what the well, scapegoat before yeah. the new scapegoat. Yeah. scapegoat yeah. Was. yeah. The video games at the time would have been like Pac-Man and yeah. Asteroids. Yeah, exactly. Things like oh, that. Simple stuff. Totally. Not, uh, you know, not demonic things that, you know, doom. Uh, religious leaders could blame for the problems of their... You know, are you, are you so. you're suggesting there's no uh, <laughs> perversion or desecration in Pac-Man? Is that what so. you're saying? Yeah, well, I don't know. I, well, it is a, some guy like eating a whole bunch of pills and like seeing ghosts. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm surprised like <laughs> we didn't see more. Uh, this the really parents of that, me. you know, like oh. <laughs> my kids do an MDMA all the time, and it's Pac-Man's fault. You know? Chasing after ghosts. <laughs> this 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 is still a thing though. This Pop led pill, right into white pills. The the the. the <laughs> Ninja Turtles Panic, right. which was the thing, the video games Panic. Uh, this lady, part, Patricia Patricia Pulling, she passed away in 1997, I think, and the bad movement kind of simmered down a little bit. But as recently as 2010, a correctional institution in the U.S. banned Dungeons & Dragons. The inmates were playing it, and they're like saying... It fosters an inmate's obsession with escaping from the real-life correctional environment, fostering hostility, violence, and escape behaviors. Well, you're not in there to have a good time. No, you're not. Like a max, a super max prison, but still, they, you know, whatever. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Gygax and Arneson both both passed away, uh, but through their years of dealing with this, basically from the 80s on, they claimed their innocence, and they stated that uh, the panic pushed their sales through the roof, 
and that ultimately the Panic was the best thing that could have happened with their creation. <laughs> Take that. The, the game continues to be one of the most popular games in the world with over 20 million uh, people having played the game and sales in the billions. We are in, uh, like I said, the Gamer's Lodge and there's a whole bunch of Dungeons and Dragons mm-hmm. or Dungeons and Dragons inspired stuff in here. Sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah there's uh, weekly meetups all the time here. So I Is mean, it really? It's, oh, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. That is wild. I actually had one uh, one group that used to come here pretty regularly, and they were an open uh, group. So like, they would have new members come in all the time, and like, were they casting spells on each other, and, like cursing everyone? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wandering into the sewer, yeah, and know, murdering just everyone, go, going in, getting into some uh, trouble over here. I'd have to calm them down sometimes. I'm like, okay, guys, Listen, guys here's some truth serums. Let's, <laughs> <laughs> let's all be friends. Stop shooting off all your magic missiles. Oh. I'm concerned that Dungeons and Dragons wouldn't be the thing to give prisoners in a max prison. Because I mean, like, <laughs> like they let their imagination go in a nonviolent way, right. and like you know. And really, who wants to think about being in a dungeon when That's you're already just, in yeah. a prison? Yeah. <laughs> you're literally, you're like, here's a fun game about dungeons. Yeah. 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 But on the other hand, I mean, if your if your real life is just a life of crime and bad yeah. people around you, maybe escapism is yeah. you know a little better than. Oh. So, Jason, what are we drinking here? What are we drinking? So we're drinking uh, Analog Brewing here. Um, <laughs> company probably brews. I don't know. I can't find the name. It's too hard. It's Analog, it's, it's analog, analog Brewing. brewing. I don't, probably I brewed in Alberta, beer, actually. Yeah. It here, but uh, it's very good. It's it's uh, 8-bit uh, animation on all, all the artwork here. What's it's the quite beer? delicious. So um, I still don't see the name. It's right in front of you. An, in another castle. Sorry. <laughs> I can't read. Sorry. Mine, uh, I just rolled a three for charisma there. So, uh, no advantage. It's no a advantage. Peach, peach mango milkshake IPA. Mm. Um, it's quite delicious. I'm enjoying it quite a bit. Maybe a little too much. It's an elixir of truth. I speak the truth. There's a little right up on the back here. It says, uh, in another castle, dry, fruity, Poppy, a milkshake IPA for IPA lovers. I certainly hope there isn't any milk in this. Ooh, that'd be bad news bears for you. Yeah, it sure would be. Um, well, boys and girls, you finally found her. Uh, after searching through many castles full of lava jellyfish and angry lizard dragons, here it is. A milkshake IPA for the IPA lover, brimming with tropical citrusy hops and a healthy dose of fresh fruit to give it a nose of mangoes and stone fruit. But it is still, at its core, a dry, easy drink and IPA with Piles of hoppy flavor. Piles. Oh, piles. I would say it's happy flavor, too. Yeah. Mm. An SRM of three for color. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Which. Yeah, I'm, no bo- and no boss to defeat to get to. It. No. <laughs> <laughs> no boss, no mini boss, yeah. just straight to the end. <laughs> if you're an Albertan, chances are you love our forests. With more than 60% of the province covered in them, they're where we play, explore, and work. Over 40,000 Albertans are employed because of our sustainable forestry industry. And before a single tree is harvested, we plan 200 years ahead to ensure healthy forests for years to come. Why? Because you nurture what you love. Learn more at loveabforests.ca. In the spirit of uh, getting out our blunt weapons, we're going to play something called Five Minute Dungeon. Isn't that the name of your sex tape, Andrew? <laughs> <laughs> that was just set up. Right? Uh, <laughs> That's the reason we picked this game. Entirely, yeah. Someone had to say that it. took months of planning. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Good night. Oh, man. So this is... Uh, Carlos is going to walk us through this. Yeah. we got to pick our characters first. You stick with the ranger. Jay seems pretty stoked <laughs> on being a ranger. I guess so. Because it matches his color Maybe, scheme. So. It does. Yeah. yeah you, I'll be a barbarian green, if there's green one. Green for so. green. Oh, look at that. Maybe... Uh, like, oh, there we go. I'm going to make the obvious joke and take the yellow color. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Here, pass me some so I can take a look. What do we got? You can be a gladiator or a barbarian. Charlie, you could be a sorceress. Would okay. You like, would you like to be a sorceress? I would like to be a sorceress. Okay. Thank you. That's my favorite dinosaur. My wife's choosing <laughs> Valkyrie for me, so Valkyrie it is. With, uh, we are all lady, lady characters. Look. With the exception here. In a video game. Well, women roam. When I'm running yeah. around for yeah. hours and hours, I could pick a male character or a female character. You pick whatever you like. Why would I pick a male character? You don't have to pick. You want to watch that all the day? Yeah. No, I would pick the other one. Do that all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's nicer. Yeah. Yeah, we're all ladies, so we'll get something done for a change, right? <laughs> so the idea of what we're trying to do here is we're trying to get through each of these dungeons. Yep. So uh, these are the doors inside the dungeon as okay. we as we perused 
through it as our team here. Dungeon architecture. Uh, we are working as a team. Yeah, That's good. We're working okay, as awesome. a team. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we have five minutes to try and get through this dungeon. Ooh, that's so, pressure. Okay. Uh, every time I flip one of these cards, there's going to be these different symbols on here. So if you guys just randomly take four cards off of your top of your deck here, you're going to have different symbols. Uh-huh. If you look at your special uh, character card thing, it's going to give you a little thing in the middle there that's a special power. So that's what would go into the discard pile. Okay. Uh, okay. And they don't come back. So See, I can once we defeat this, uh, yeah, once you defeat this person, we flip the card and we go to the very next, next person. thing we got to tackle and then they're gonna try to throw us curveballs and stuff where you know like hey you gotta put six of these yeah know, okay. things down and then yeah. uh, occasionally you'll pick up cards that have like special powers in them and then we got to use them and put them down um i believe the, the one of the wizard it's either the wizard or the sorcerer has the ability to stop time Ooh! so we can we can actually put a pause on this until we actually play something right gives us time to think about it um it's like a timeout yeah there is a way we found out if you run out of cards, there is a card somewhere in someone's deck that allows you to kind of replenish uh, okay. again. But basically, if you're, if you're yeah. out of cards, you're, you're useless to the team and uh, will be berated as such. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, all right. And then so I got to put a five minute timer on here. So we take these ones back? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Shuffle them back in? Yeah, shuffle them back in. Do you ever use the timer with uh, with the kids? Have a big timer? Oh, you're in timeout. Tur- yeah. Turn it on and. No, yeah, that's a yeah. that's a fantastic yeah, idea. I love that one. Uh, my it's wife, both my kids are behind me. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> Ninety seconds. Think about what you did. Yeah. yeah. Gee, I only Just got a count time. to three when I was younger. Like one, two. Oh, you better not hear that three. <laughs> <laughs> my, mine was the wait till whatever head. weapon was found. <laughs> <laughs> Wooden spoon. <laughs> Filipino guys, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Your mom is uh, plus five with blunt weapons. I guess yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, she's rolling versus, with advantage. Uh, <laughs> versus younglings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, oh, that's was so it bardic inspiration? Oh no, this can't be good either. <laughs> so, yeah, essentially we're trying to beat it at uh, in five minutes. Okay. And this final boss also has a bunch of symbols that we need to get also to defeat him. And so far in the two times I've played this, we have lost. Both times. Mm. Ooh, well, yeah. get ready for loss number three. Yeah. yeah. Ready? Let's do right. this. Everybody let's do get it. four okay. cards. Got them. Yeah, and all right, let's yeah. do it. Option to override automatic detonation expires in T minus five minutes. Well, gentlemen, I'm going to a level in this game I've never been to before. Ooh, and okay. Now we're talking. Level two. Oh, save your scrolls. The Grim Reaper. The Grime Reaper. He's got a he's uh, the oh, character has got a bottle of Windex. So <laughs> it looks like an undeck dead character. By the way, Andrew, so this is gonna be hard. We gotta go through twenty five regular door cards. Um, it's all right, six, guys. Oh, there are more door cards. My secret right. power is to stop time. Good. So don't worry, I got this. The side effect is that you stop it for yourself as well. Stop it for yourself as well. For yourself as well. Side effects, side effects, stop it for yourself. Yeah. (laughs) Did you learn this from a previous thing? (laughs) Maybe. You think it's an advantage, but it's not. I can feel that in the whole I, cat. I know, man. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, it's, it's so bad. Okay, four cards for everybody. Four card drop. Three, four. Do you have any threes? Oh. <laughs> Wait Bruno, go we fish. <laughs> Haven't been playing bridge this whole time. <laughs> we had eight seconds in that last one. Okay. All right, there we go. What do we got? Okay, I, I got a jump. sword. Okay. There we go. Boom. What does that what say? Does say? Yay, thank you. Interesting. All right. Oh, Who's Do we need a new card? Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, I got the shield, the runner. I have a sword. I got the shield. scroll. Yeah, there we go. Damn. You guys are way faster than me. I got a jumper. You need a potion of agility there. Okay, I got the scroll. I need one more scroll. Runner. Can we use these? Oh, I got a scroll. Boom. Can I just slap this down and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to just... Can we use this at the end of the boss? Yeah, I got a scroll. Well, okay. what? Not the boss, but maybe some of the. Scroll. We need a you scroll. Got a scroll. I, I got a scroll. I got a scroll. Okay. Shield. Just need a shield. Who's got a shield? Who's got a shield? I have a shield. Okay. Oh. I have a shield. <laughs> no, uh, but that's two shields. I got a sword. I got a sword. Shield. I need a shield. Shield. Shield, shield it up. Shield. Okay. Okay. I got a, the two shield. That's all right. Okay. Next. What, what does it say? Two dungeon cards. 
Uh oh, we gotta fight all these. Oh, Jesus. Oh, man. That's all right. Oh, okay. I got four arrows. All yeah, the arrows are taken care of. I have a, a holy hand here. grenade that'll defeat this one. one. Of them? Okay. Oh. Take the big guy out. Yep. And so, and so a sword, arrow. I got a sword. We jumper. Oh. Got to run it. Oh. So we, we need, need a, a sword. Sorry. We need oh. the arrow. arrow. I got the arrow. No, I arrow. Okay. already had the arrow. Oh. I had the arrow for all of them. Oh, green. Just need a jumper. There you go. Jumper. Okay, I got the, the arrow. arrow. Oh, oh, I bet. Okay. Jumper. Jumper. Yep. Boom. Done. Arrow, sword. So we need one okay, more one sword. One more uh, sword. Sword. Wild card. Yep. Wild card. Okay. Boom. Oh, I got two. Boom. Done. There you go. Who's uh, that? All players discard uh, three cards. Uh, Damn. Okay. Yuck. <sighs> All right. Next. One, two, three. Uh, runner. I got a runner. Okay, shield. shield. Yep. Boom. Ah. <laughs> I got a shield. Another shield and an arrow. I got the Boom. Arrow. Oh, okay. sorry. Okay. Uh, you guys keep your arrow. Okay. Uh, scroll. I got the scroll. I got a sword. We need one more sword. Sword. Boom. Monster. Hold on. Uh, Fireball. Uh, defeat a monster. <laughs> <laughs> Kablam! Love it. I have three runners. Uh, three runners. Boom. Yeah. Got the scroll. One arrow. Yeah, we need another arrow. Uh, arrow! We're going to need another arrow. I got one. Okay. Boom. Wild card. Yeah. All players, you discard a card. Uh, discard a card. Okay. Ah. Yeah. Right, what's next? Sword. Got them both. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Right, I have a scroll. And, uh, we need an arrow. Arrow, arrow. Yep, yep. Here we go. Wild card. Ooh. Oh, I got a uh, I got a runner. Sword. One runner. One sword. runner. Okay, two I have two of each. Sword. I have two swords and one runner. We need okay. one more runner. I got it. Boom. Boom. Two minutes. Okay, I got that. Three shields. Oh. Yeah. You got the shield. Yeah, three shields. I have a scroll and a sword. Discard. Next card. Two swords. Two swords. Yeah. Got swords. Damn. Discard. No. This is not helping. Yeah, I got two swords. Here. You got yeah, two yeah, swords. Yeah, yeah. I want right. to use those wild cards, but I'll yeah, the runner. So. So. I'm out. Uh, I can do this. So I've got either one of the shield or sword, whoever's yeah. got. Very good. That's yeah. one of them. That's all of them, right? Yeah, no, counts as one of each. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. okay. Okay. That's right. Three swords. Three swords. What is that? Monster. I got a sword. Monster. Wait, hold on. Take oh. it back. Monster killed. Fireball. Boom. Uh, mm. uh, I got a runner. Oh, oh, love yeah. it. Okay, I got the runner. I got a second uh, runner. Okay, I only have Oh, runners. I've got three Okay, we need scrolls. one more scroll. Scrolly scroll. Buck 15, I guys. Scroll it. I got to dis discard three. Somebody pick up four. Okay. Who's got the most? You don't have that many. Do I need to discard these ones? Uh, or do I, I hold them all? Yeah, I hold them all. Okay, I have two scrolls. Yeah, two scrolls. scrolls okay. taken care of. Well. Yeah, you almost there, boys. Two runners. Two runners. Run. Oh. Two runners. There you go. Glass door. I got a shield. Okay, I got an arrow. Oh, all right. Okay, so now we need all okay. of those scrolls. Oh. And I've got two shields. I have the third shield. Okay. Now we need um, seven scrolls. Here. I've got one scroll. Get four from your discard pile. We need the. One, two, three, four. I've got one scroll. We need six scrolls. You've wasted a turn on You can pick up the rest of yours. All right. We've got another one, so we're down to... Two more here. Okay. How many do we need? Two more scrolls. Okay, I have two wild cards. Yeah, boom. Done. Done. Look at that. It's 26 seconds left. The universe I thought you picked a hard game. <laughs> I wanted a challenge. No. Oh, wow, man. that was fun. Oh boy, it's too, too basic of it. Uh, throwing my balls all over the place. <laughs> fireballs. Yeah. Throwing my fireballs all over the place. I do the other thing on Tuesdays. Right? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a different dungeon. That's a different dungeon. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's the touching dungeon. That's the third uh, <laughs> sex tape. Uh, so. got magic uh, mess of green cards up in here. I don't know how we got so many of these purple guys. We should be able to put enough together out of that to make a, a tight little fun, <laughs> tight, fun, fun, fun time. You're looking yeah. for a tight package out yeah. of that? <laughs> Cluck member. Cluck member. Okay. Northern Chicken. Craft beer, bourbon, and hot chicken. Come down and try one of Alberta's best beer lists, all the while eating Edmonton's hottest chicken. Oh, yeah. Try one of our hot sauces made from scratch and fantastic sides. Mm. I can't wait. I can't wait either. Charlie, have you been to Northern Chicken before? So many times. It's phenomenal. It's amazing. It's, I can't wait. I was just there last week. Were you? I was. What did you have? Chicken. <laughs> what a shocker, huh? We just had some chicken and some mac and cheese. Yeah. And you know what is exciting? It's super exciting. 
it, we're, we're going to be down there. We are. We got, uh, we've got our Cluck member, and we are going to be doing a live event, uh, Chicken Surprise. Chicken Surprise! <laughs> at the end of November, live at Northern Chicken, and it's going to be... Spicy! Yeah. Super spicy, super so fun. So spicy. Yeah. I'm, I'm really stoked on it. I am, too. Yeah. It's going to be so good. Yeah! Northern Chicken. Mmm. Uh, thank you so much. That was so much fun. Uh, thank you for listening. And you can listen to all of our episodes on it's conspiracy uh, Plus you can find links, including our merch at old man design. Oh, old man design.com. <laughs> Come on down. We'll get you sorted. <laughs> and our Patreon page, uh, patreon.com slash. It's a conspiracy. Uh, thank you so much to Gamers Lodge for hosting us here at your beautiful store. Please come down and check it out. You can probably hear us behind uh, here behind us. It's full of people. They're Bustling. having a great time. Bustling. Yeah. And for a place with that's about board games, nobody's bored. Hey. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I knew that joke was coming yeah, at some it was, point. I appreci- <laughs> from dad to dad, I really appreciate oh. that. Oh, yeah. Uh, we will be back with episode six in mid-November and a very fun chicken adventure courtesy of the good people at Northern Chicken. Oh, I'm excited for that. It's going to be great. I've been talking to Matt. That's Cluck Vember. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for stopping by. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Carlos. And uh, we're not done with you guys just yet, but we're done for this episode. So yeah. thank there's you, there's everyone. Snacks. Not leaving until the snacks. <laughs> the snack time is coming, yeah. yeah. Cool. Th- uh, yeah, take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.